Hello guys, welcome back to Economics 1601 and I am Ellie and we are writing exams on Wednesday so good luck with that. Okay, so I think people who've done, who've studied economics for a long time think this is very obvious and very easy but when you start out with economics it sounds very confusing. So let's go over the circular flow of income again. So let's look at what is economics and what is it that we're going to study in this subject. Okay, so what this subject says is that there is a circular flow which is our economy. So there's production, there's income, and that, then there is spending. And this is the circular flow and this is our economy. Okay, so that is our economy. Now there's a few assumptions with this. It's a very, very easy um, summary because we don't have the government we don't have anything in here we just have somebody producing something earning money for it and spending that money again so this is what happens in the economy so if you look at jobs and factories there are people producing things because they're producing it they get income for it with the income they pay laborers and they earn profits and all of those things and then they're spending again and the economy just keeps on turning like this and it looks really it looks quite simple but it's very very important okay so we have production income and spending and it works in a circle uh, to, to try and understand it better imagine you had 2,000 Rand on your cash today and you go and spend that money Whatever you spend it on is going to cause production to happen. So if you go spend that money on, let's say, bread, it means that there won't be any bread left in the shop, so somebody's going to go and make more bread. So there's going to be production. The money you pay for the bread is income again. So they earn an income, and the income gets spent again. It's not, I don't know, it's almost so easy that it's complicated. So let me just draw this again and then we're going to just discuss this one more time. So here we have income. Let's say it's your salary or your pocket money or whatever money you get, it's income. Once you have that money, you are going to go spend it. So there is spending. But whatever you're spending it on should have been produced at some point. So there's production. Which leads back to income. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our economy. It's very simple. It does not include the government. It does not include the foreign sector. It's basically just a very much simplified idea of what is economics but from here we can do quite a lot of interesting things so first if this is our economy and this is our little box so let's put it in a little box there's our little box what you hear often in the news or over the radio is that you know you want the economy to grow you know you want if the economy could grow there would be more jobs or if the economy could grow, it, it, there would be more income. So how do we get this system to grow? How do we grow our economy? So here, there are some things that they call injections into the economy or the circular flow of income and spending. Okay, so the injections, oh wait, first, before we go there. I wrote this here because it's uh, so easy that it's difficult. Spending is A. Production is Y, income is Y. Why, why? So why is income and production the same? Because whatever you produce, you will get paid for. This is a little bit of an assumption, so they assume that you'll sell everything. So production will equal income. So why, why? When you see a why, it can either be the total income or the total production of the economy, which is med measured with either GDP, gross domestic product, or GNI, gross national income, I think. Sp 
depending on the other end is not exactly equal. Now, why is it not exactly equal? The answer here is that not everybody look, in South Africa, I think everybody that earns 100 Rand spends 150 Rand, which is quite terrible. But let's look at China, for example, where everybody earns 100 Rand, and of that they save so much of it, like let's say 70, and they only spend the remaining 30. I hope I'm still in the camera. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm falling off. Let's move up. So, what I'm saying here is that this can't be Y, this must be A, because you don't necessarily spend all your money. Okay? In the perfect world, you're supposed to save some of your money, so your spending will be... So it's your income minus your savings equal your spendings. Okay, that's what it comes down to. All right, so now that we have Y and A figured out, we can talk about how to grow the economy or how to inject or boost the economy. So injections. This is a little makeshift injection. So we are going to inject funds or money into here into the little box to grow the economy. So how can we do this? The first thing we have is government spending. So what I said earlier is the assumption is that the government is not in here. Okay, it's just us and we're just working and doing our thing. The government sits outside of the economy, but what they can do is they can spend money on textbooks or they can spend money on roads or they can spend money on railways or building bridges they can spend money and whenever they spend money it injects money into the circular flow so that is an injection and it's good okay all of these are good by the way then the only the other thing we have is exports exports so we said that we're going to ignore the foreign sector, but realistically, you could build TVs and put them on a little boat and sell them away and go sell them elsewhere. When you go sell them elsewhere, that cash comes back in. Okay, that cash comes back in. And that means there's more money in the system. And then there's other things like, I think it's foreign direct investment or the mod, okay, yes, there's that. And then there is the marginal propensity to consume. Now it's getting a little bit complicated, so don't worry about it too much. And the marginal propensity to import, which is also a little bit complicated. Don't worry about it too much. It's just saying, if this ship's going the other way, if this ship is coming here with the TVs from China, TV, then we have to take this money and pay it to China, which means money, money goes out. So talking about money going out, let's have a look at leakages. So here's our economy, and obviously we want a strong economy. We don't want money to leak out of this. What is leakages? So leakages here is the water that's leaking out of the bucket. For leakages, we have taxes. Okay, taxes leaks money out of the economy because here's our income. Whatever we don't have to pay on tax, we spend again. The spending goes into production. The production goes back to income. Taxes takes money away over there. So it's a leakage. The other thing was the savings thing we spoke about. When you save your money, even though savings is a great thing, it does take money out of this circular flow. So when you save money, you're not going to spend it on production. So somebody else is not going to earn an income. And spend that money again so savings is actually a leakage and then I briefly mentioned it earlier but imports imports if that ship comes from China and we pay them that money goes out and that is a leakage that is a leakage so that was just briefly injections into the economy and leakages out of the economy now let me just clean this up because it's looking very confusing By the way, if anybody's really good with editing videos, you are welcome to contact me. And then we can make better quality videos. And I always forget, please subscribe.
Yay! 85% of people who watch my movies are not subscribers. Please subscribe. I am really looking forward to one day monetizing my videos because then big corporates can pay for them and we can all watch them for free. So please do me a favor and subscribe. That'll be absolutely awesome. Okay, back to the circular flow. We have production, which is why. We have income, which is also why. And we have spending, which is A. I know up until here you thought everything's very easy. So I'm going to start making it a little bit harder now. Bear with me. The economy now gets something called a multiplier. As you can see, if I put a hundred rand in here, if we if the government if the government injects a hundred bucks into production, it gets produced, there's income of a hundred rand. It gets spent again. So here we go again. The spending leads to more production, which leads to more income, which leads to more spending, which leads to more production, which leads to more income. And this beautiful thing is called the multiplier. And it is represented with an alpha that looks a little bit like an A. And this A represents the multiplier. What is the multiplier? The multiplier says that for every 100 Rand you put into the system, the economy grows by a hundred times the multiplier because that same money gets spent over and over again. And they say this is made possible by, um, by the banks, by the commercial banks. Because you, you take your money and you put it with Capitec, Capitec lends that money to somebody, they spend it again. So the whole economic system, you know, the wheel starts turning and Obviously, the more income there is, the more money everybody earns, all of us, you know, the more money we earn, the more money we spend. And when we start spending more, obviously, there's more production. Otherwise, what are we going to buy? So we have the multiplier. Now, the reason why the multiplier is important is it helps us to calculate questions. So in the Tut Letter study guide. Okay, so I have here with me the study guide. Um, and I am on the 2018 version of page 72, activity 6.6. .6. So here, they start asking for a little bit of math. They say here, let me open it nicely, calculate the equilibrium, equilibrium level of income in an economy with a gov without a government in a foreign sector. If... C equals 100 million, small c equals 0 0.875, and I equals 150 million. All right, so this one over here is the marginal propensity to consume. It's the marginal propensity to consume. And it's also the slope of the curve. That is autonomous consumption. That is even if you are broke, you still need food. You still need things. Even though you have zero money, you're still spending money. But understanding what all of this means is not that important. What is important is to get marks in your exam. So I'm going to teach you how to calculate the alpha. The alpha, which is the multiplier, multiplier equals 1 over 1 minus... Small c. Do I have this right? Let me just double check myself quickly. Small c. Yes. Okay. And that equals 1 over 1 minus 0 0.875, which equals 1 over 0 0.125. And if you put that into your calculator, you get 8. So we know that our multiplier is 8. I'm not going into detail because sometimes I think it's easier to just do the big stuff first and then worry about why we're doing it later. So we just worked out that the multiplier is 8. The next thing you need to know is that to then work out 
the equilibrium. So that question that they asked, what is the equilibrium income? You take this, you say equilibrium income equals the multiplier times A. A we said is spending, right? A we said is spending. So now we're going to, there's this thing that they do, they say autonomous spending equals autonomous consumption plus autonomous investment equals, so you take your autonomous, your big C that they gave you and your big I that they gave you, the ones that they gave you. So we were here, 100 and 150. I think I just wrote it down, I might have gotten it wrong. It's 100 and 150. million which equals 250 million times 8 now let's just double check that I did this right this is AI so let's go to AI mm. we worked out our multiplier as 8 that is correct we said our autonomous spending equals autonomous consumption and autonomous investments, which is really the ones they gave us, the, two for f the 100, 150. So it's this times 8. And that equals that. And that is the correct answer. So when they ask you to calculate the equilibrium level of income, the equilibrial equilibrium level of income this is what you do I'm gonna do another example because I was all over the park with this one so let's just try another one okay I'm gonna try AI AI I in the book they say that the big C equals 10 million they say that the small C equals 0 0.75 and the big I equals 40 million and they ask us what is the equilibrium level of income level of income without a government and a foreign sector okay so then we don't get confused we just go and get marks so we start and we say the multiplier equals 1 over 1 minus C which equals 1 over 1 minus 0 0.75, which equals 1 over 0 0.25. And 25 goes in there four times, but just put this into your calculator, that's 4. So our multiplier is 4. What are we going to multiply? We are going to multiply the A, which equals the big C plus the I, which will equal 10 plus 40, which equals 50 mil. These are autonomous spending, we times it by the multiplier and our total is 200. And that is that. I'm going to double check myself, I, I. Yeah, that's it. Wonderful. So that's how we're going to get marks with the multiplier and the small little C thingy, which is also the marginal propensity to consume. Don't get confused by it, just do it. Great. I think that's enough to keep us busy for now. Um, good luck and yeah the next videos are coming please subscribe and thanks for the awesome comments cheers